Again, Netta is our primary presenter. I am her co-host. Uh, and I am uh, Elsa Bagrini with uh, the Alumni Association. I work with the chapters and we are, the, we are uh, proud to present, the chapters presents <laughs> the Wellness Wednesday presentations. And what we recognize is our alumni have a rich amount of experience and they want to share it with other alumni and students. And that's what this bond of being an anteater family is all about. Be able to share that and support each other and elevate each other. Together we're better, right? Absolutely. So with that, let me tell you a little bit more about our presenter. Uh, again, Miss Netta Amoyeti is the president of the Iranian American Alumni Chapter. It's a chapter that's coming on to two years now, and it's an amazing chapter with some amazing people. So if you identify and connect with that culture and community, please consider joining the chapter. If not this chapter, there are over 30 other chapters that I invite you to consider. They're all very unique with fun personalities doing an amazing job in supporting each other. In addition, Ms. Uh, Netta has over 12 years of industry experience, including extensive experience in career coaching, teaching career courses, and facilitating professional development workshops. Netta has a long-standing mindfulness and meditation practice, which she infuses into the in her classroom and her coaching sessions. She is dedicated to empowering others to thrive by sharing a combination of wellness strategies, strength-based leadership development, and a variety of resources, tools, and practices for her clients to create their own definition and roadmap. Netta, and I can tell you this from firsthand experience, is one of the most positive, uplifting human beings that we are lucky to know and are honored to present today. Thank you, Netta. Thank you, Elsa. You're so kind. I really appreciate it. I'm so excited to be here with you. Um, as Elsa mentioned, you know, absolutely, whether you identify or, you know, resonate with the Iranian American culture, we are definite, like we're open to our membership. You don't have to be Iranian American to join um, any of the alumni chapters. I encourage you to check out the website because, you know, this team here at UCI at the Alumni Association, they are an incredible group of people who create the sense of community for us to come together. And I think it's more important now than ever for us to find ways to connect, to uplift one another. Um, so thank you, Elsa, for your kind introduction um, and just having me here and allowing me the time and space to connect and hopefully add some value to our community here tonight. Um, so I just want to say, I know you mentioned that the questions would be towards the end. However, I do like, I'm going to go over a lot of information. Uh, one of the things I was most excited about this conversation tonight is because we have such a wide variety of folks who have registered, right? There are um, folks who are alumni from the early 90s, late 80s, um, all the way up to current undergraduate and graduate students. Um, doesn't mean that this information won't apply because I'm going to give a major like an overview of everything because it's all the best practices that we should all be doing no matter where we are um, in our journey. But then if there's questions that you might have specific to where you are um, in your specific circumstances and what you're facing and navigating, please absolutely. That was the reason we wanted to make sure we encouraged you to use the chat as much as possible, we can't be face to face right now. However, we can still create as much dialogue as possible so that I can take the overview conversation and topic and maybe be able to answer something specifically um, to each and every one of you. Again, my, my intention here tonight is to hopefully add value, add hope, um, and let you know that there is still a lot of opportunities when it comes to your career, even though we are facing some really challenging times. Um, with that said, too, is many of the folks who are joining us, you know, some of us still have jobs. We are working from home. Um, other folks have been furloughed or laid off. 
And there's some of you that were already on a job search prior to any of this stuff happening. Um, and I just want to encourage you to acknowledge what it is we're going through, that it is challenging, but it's not impossible. There are still um, many companies that are hiring and we'll talk about some of those resources. Um, but really starting from that place of self-reflection, right? Be with where you are um, and not compare to where anyone else, if someone asks a question, but if you're experiencing something as we go through this conversation uh, and you want to ask a question, I encourage you to do so because if you have a question, someone else does as well. Um, and sometimes the best advice I've received is when someone else asked a question and it really hit home for me. So with that, please be brave, be part of the conversation and let's do this together. Um, but, you know, acknowledging the difficult time with COVID and the unexpected, you know, um, challenges that we've had, it's, it's really important to be realistic as well. On a, any normal given day, a job search, a full-time job search, I always, you know, would say to my clients as well as my students uh, that it's going to take six months on average. And I'm sure I just stressed a bunch of people out. I know graduation is in like 10 minutes, but don't worry. Um, but you know, you really think about, it's not just hitting submit on those resumes and you know, hitting submit, it's really a lot more than that. You know, we're gonna talk a little bit about your resumes, your informational interviews and things that you could be doing and different strategies to um, sort of employ as you do embark on everything that you're, you're about to. But um, again, I, I definitely want you to let me know where you're at on, on your space. Before I jump into everything too, just to share a little bit more about myself, uh, for, as Elsa was reading some of the bio, I'm also staff on campus. So I was a non-traditional student when I left UCI, um, and, or when I came to UCI, and it was an internship that allowed me to work at the Career Center to realize, like, this is what I want to do. Let me go get my degree. I'll be right back. Um, I worked in the Career Center for three and a half years working with graduate students, specifically um, masters and PhDs and working with their professional development and their career counseling. And then I transitioned to the SAGE Scholars Program. So I'm currently the director of SAGE, which stands for Student Achievement Guided by Experience. And that in and of itself is a two-year leadership professional development program for our superstar students. Um, so I, I want to be as transparent because I love UCI. I love everything about UCI, um, especially right now in these times, I, I could not be more grateful for our campus leadership. Um, our chance from our chancellor all the way down and you know, being able to adapt and pivot. I've never used the word pivot as much as I have in, in the last few months, um, but really thinking about how are we being able to adapt and as a university, as a research institute, where we have our amazing pillars that we stand on with our brilliant future campaign, it's, it's not just talk. We really are trying to make sure our anteater family thrives in a very um, uncertain time. So even after this conversation, if I can be of any assistance or anything, please let me know how I can help. Um, yes, good Elsa. All right, sounds good. So that's just an overview. You know, I myself was a career changer. So for some of you folks out there that might be a little bit more seasoned as I, as I am, and you know, we've been through a couple of recessions and scary times. Uh, you know, I was in the finance and mortgage industry in the 90s when that fell apart, as you can imagine. And then of course in 2008. So it's really important to, yes, we say these are unprecedented times, but you know, it's not something that we won't be able to transcend together. So I don't want anyone out there thinking they gotta do it alone, um, but that's what we're here for. So again, the hope is for us to have some engagement, but let's just jump right in to think about when you're embarking on any kind of career change, career strategy, you know, you're starting, you're just starting out. You know, I always like to go back to step one and that's that self-reflection and self-awareness piece, right? This is where I want you to spend some time to really reflect and know yourself. And whether you wanna do it with a coach or you wanna do it with a friend or a colleague, just do it, right? It's, it's really important to be able to figure out your values, figure out you know, what are your strengths, recognize and be real with yourself. If you're looking at a job opportunity, do you have a skills gap, right? 
you won't know those things if you just jump right in from a place of desperation, which it can feel that way um, when we are running out of time, we're running out of money to pay our bills, right? So it's, it's gonna be a different job search experience if you're just throwing everything in and you're just throwing your resume in, or are you taking the time to really focus on who you are, what value do you wanna to add to an organization, and, and start from there, almost like starting with your why, right? So that's really important. And then we're gonna go over the broad overview of a, a few of these items and any resources, websites that I share out in this conversation, Elsa and I will put together just a brief summary to share out with you after when you get the recording as well, just so that you're not feeling, oh my God, I didn't get that, WW what? So I don't want you to, to, to feel like you're missing out. So please know if I talk about a resource or share something, one, this recording will be available, but two, we'll send out a summary for you as well. So thinking about that step one, right? You're like in that first phase of what do I need to do? Because this is a lifelong process. You will not be on this career journey one and done. So it's really important to set the foundation of how you go about this job search and just your career development in general, right? So if you are coming from a place that you know, all right, I do have a skills gap and this is the industry I wanna get into, what do you need to do? Right now is the time, I hand on heart, why are there so many webinars? Every minute of every day, somebody else has a webinar, but it is also a good time for you to connect. There's Coursera um, courses that are for free. Our division of continuing education. So if I use acronyms, I'll do my best to spell those out too. So DCE is the Division of Continuing Education with a ton of free resources around your career development and career resources. So if you haven't checked out their website, regardless of where you are in your journey, definitely check those out because they have so much, so much to offer in terms of what you're trying to do. So once you have an idea of, you know, your skills, your strengths, you know, you've done a little bit of research into what industry you're interested in. And now is the time for you to almost like work with the end goal in mind. So rather than just seeking out job descriptions, you really want to seek out companies to research to recognize what's their mission, what's their vision, and how does that align with your know yourself, right? And so that you're not just, you know, going through this process aimlessly, but again, coming back and doing it with intention. So once you do that, you know, then you have your materials. And this is probably my favorite topic, and each of these things we'll touch on. I, I could do a workshop on each of these, and actually I do have a workshop for each of these that are an hour long each. So what I do want to give an overview, right? So when it comes to your materials, when you think about your resume, your cover letter, you know, this is so important for you to tailor. If you hear someone tell you you should be tailoring your resume, they are not just trying to give you extra work to do right? It's really important because right now there are more applicants than there are jobs. So it's up to you all out there to make sure that you are making yourself the most competitive, compelling candidate possible, right? It's not just about talking about your technical skills, but also having that lens of what are those other essential skills that you're adding, and that's where, if you're not telling a story within your resume, I talk to recruiters all day to help me you know, place my students in a variety of internship opportunities. And so I hear from my recruiter community that you know, when people say resumes aren't important, they are absolutely important. They may not be the be all end all, because if you ask me personally, I think your cover letter is even more important than your resume, because your cover letter is where you're doing your introduction. Your cover letter is where you tell me what you would tell me face to face, not just your pitch, who you are, but why do you wanna work for me? What is it about this position that makes you a fit? And I'll dig a little bit deeper in both those things in just a moment. So really think about application tracking systems are a very real thing. That means they are looking for keywords, they are looking for key skills, and if you are not taking that extra step to pull up the job description, and please make sure you save any job description you apply for, make sure you save it. Because once it's gone, you can never catch it again. And how will you prepare for the interview when you get the call? So 
the application tracking system will take keywords from their job description, anything that was from their mission and vision. That's why your research is so important. But you will go through that process and see that, for example, if there are two job descriptions that you're thinking about and one job description, they're similar positions, but this job description is asking you um, that collaboration within a team is very important. And you see that come up a few times, not just within their job description, but also as you look on their website. And a very similar position could have the word partnership instead of collaboration. This is one of my favorite examples because it's such a small tweak to your document that makes all the difference, right? So in one job application, you're gonna highlight and quantify who you collaborate with, what you collaborated and what was your result? What was the value added as a result of you collaborating? And on the other resume, I wanna make sure you're saying partnered. So I encourage you to have a master resume that has all your information, that has really strong action verbs that captures your accomplishments, right? This is your opportunity to show me, not just tell me what you've um, accomplished, right? I think some folks will say, oh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm a collaborator, but you never quantify it. So on your resume, you should absolutely, absolutely be quantifying you, what you're doing. How many, you know, students are you meeting with? Like for me, I'm in higher education, so I, I quantify with how many students, what are the accomplishments, what were the results? So make sure that your resume has that information captured. And then when you're thinking about your cover letter, you wanna be really clear. When you're saying I'm submitting my application materials for this position, you will take that exact title as it reads in the job description and put it in your cover letter. Because that in and of itself is a check plus for your application tracking system. But within that, my, my goal is for folks to understand that it's not, I, I used to be in finance and I did that for almost you know, 15 years. And I'm, you know, as, as Elsa said, I'm positive, I'm very kind, but when it comes to reviewing materials, I, I, I put on a completely different lens. If your resume or cover letter has a typo, a grammatical error, um, it's like the kiss of death for me. You could have been my top candidate and I, I've either put you in the no pile or I've put you in the maybe pile. And I don't do that because I'm trying to be cold, but it's don't waste my time. It's you don't want to waste the recruiter's time. You don't want to waste the person who's reading your materials, who's also probably in a frame. You don't know the bias, right? They're probably in their own frantic place. So make it easy. Make it easy on the recruiters. Make it easy for the person reading your materials to answer the question why you want to work for them, right? So when I said, why do you want to work for me? I meant that from that lens. But it's really important that this is where you've done your homework and you can say, you know, connect something to their mission and don't leave your why to the end of the cover letter. Definitely include that in the very beginning. How did you hear about this position? You know, why do you want to work there? And in those middle paragraphs, you're really doing what? You're going to marry your job description to your cover letter, right? And to your, um, your skills, your natural talents, your experiences. This is where you get to tell me why you're a fit. Can you do the job? This is what they're looking for right so within that space you need to look at that job description looking at what those um, requirements are and then make sure that that is answered in the bulk of the middle of your paragraph cover letters should not be more than one page um, for formatting for rules definitely check out the division of career pathways that's dcp um, at uci because there's also wonderful toolkits on their website that will allow you to see resume samples and to me, I don't care where you are in your career journey, that information is always helpful. Because sometimes when we're more seasoned, we sometimes forget the basics, right? Like, oh yeah, oh, I should have formatted that way, I, I forgot, right? So there, these are resources that are available to you that you should definitely take advantage of. So those are the things that I would say for your resume and cover letter, it needs to capture why are you a fit and can you do this job and why do you wanna work there? If you're just submitting your materials and you're not standing above the rest, you don't sound any different, um, that's gonna make, make or break whether you get the call or not. Um, I, as I shared earlier, like the kiss of death was the typos and the grammatical errors, but I, I just wanna make sure that people understand that you could get discounted for the most minuscule reason. So make sure you've done the work, make sure you've done the preparation piece and 
in order to do those things, here's another little look, like legwork I'm gonna ask you to do, right? This is worth the effort. You'll hear a lot about informational interviewing. And if you're not familiar with what informational interviewing is, you know, you can seek out alumni, professionals in an industry that you're interested in, you know, either breaking into, or if you're already seasoned and you're looking to make a transition, this is a really wonderful opportunity for you to be able to build your network, right? Now more than ever, your relationships matter um, because if you can get a human being on the other side that will tell, you know, be an advocate on your behalf as you're going through the process, that's, that's the help we're all looking for, right? So this is your opportunity to be able to get to know. Now everyone's like, oh, informational interviews are so awkward, right? You're not trying to get a job. It's almost like you're doing your research. What does this company stand for? What does their ideal candidate look like? And if you reach out, there are templates. Uh, if you need help drafting how to reach out to someone, whether it's on LinkedIn, we're gonna talk about LinkedIn in a minute, um, you know, whether it's on LinkedIn, whether it's on our platform, AntNet, um, which is within our UCI network. And I, I'll make sure Elsa and I will we'll chat about that later. AntNet is a place where, it's a UCI alumni who are willing to connect with you. Like for myself, I, I finally completed my profile and making myself available so that if somebody has a question about my journey, my job, or needs help, then, then we can do that. So it's really checking in with AntNet. Oh, good, you put it in the notes, I like that. So be sure to connect because if, whether you're a mentor or a mentee, regardless, mentors, you know, we also need mentors. So. It's, it's a lifelong process, and the sooner you get connected, the easier it does, it does become for you to have those conversations. So I'm not um, downplaying how awkward informational interviews can be, but when you're prepared for the conversation, um, and we'll, we'll, I'll share more about that when we get to LinkedIn. But Antnet, thank you for putting that in the chat box, Elsa. So... Also with informational interviews, don't discount the people who are already in your lives, right? There are plenty of people, family members, friends of friends that you have access to that you may have never asked them what they do or what, what entail, like what do they do for a living? How did they get started in their career? And it's really important to have those questions prepared ahead of time. If somebody is willing to give you 30 minutes of their time, don't waste it make sure you're prepared, make sure you have your questions ready to go. Um, there's a um, tool called Imagine PhD, and this is predominantly for graduate students, but I, I, I share this opportunity with my students um, because Imagine PhD was developed by a wonderful group of career, um, career professionals. This is what we do. They worked on it and they have assessments in there for free, everybody for free, uh, where you can do a values assessment. You can kind of get an overview of your skills. And these are things that you can do again, what? Because you're going back to step one in that preparation. You know yourself, you know your values, you know your skills and if there's any gaps. And it's a really wonderful opportunity when you do connect with folks in the industry or in a position that you're always been curious about but didn't know how to go about asking. These are the things you can ask. Like, is there professional development I should be doing? You know, what, is there anything I'm missing in order to break into an industry? What makes an ideal candidate and how can I work specifically for this? Sometimes it's having your foot in the door and working on a project, just one project, so they get exposed to you. Um, and then that, that helps you build a relationship. So right now is the time to be creative. It's not whatever was tried and true. Some of those things are still here, but you get to redefine how we go forward. And I say, by all means, get creative, get comfortable being uncomfortable so that you can unlock opportunities. This is not a time for you to let your foot off the pedal. This is not a time to give into that mindset that there aren't any jobs, no one's gonna hire me. Absolutely, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult, but it's not impossible. Right, so um, think about that growth mindset, right? And it's coming from a place, if you find yourself in a negative sort of cycle of, I can't, I don't want to, they're not gonna hire me, I'm not good enough, please take the time to reframe that and have that sort of patience and grace with yourself because we're all going through something completely unknown and everybody's doing the best they can. 
right? We're all at different places. We're all struggling in different ways. But if you are able to make meaning of what is going on for you right now, forget the outside noise for you. How are you being adaptable? How are you being flexible? These are those essential skills I'm talking about where for the job, you'll have the technical skills, but who are you as a whole person? The holistic person that comes to any organization, any job, any team um, really would prefer to be with someone who has that understanding of this is how I, I adapted and then you're able to articulate it. So this takes some practice um, not like everybody wakes up the next day and is like, oh, this is how I transitioned out of this really difficult time, but it's a process and it's different for everybody. Some of us journal, um, some folks, you know, talk, some, some of us get out in nature and just walk. That's been my savior. Um, but really thinking about how are you making meaning of, of these times right now? Um, so that's really just about informational interviews, which, which segues into networking right? Um, and I, I'm, I will be the first person. I love in-person networking, even when it's awkward and you don't know what to say, but there's this energy that's missing a little bit when you're doing it online. You're not having that exchange of energy. So how do you make sure you still cultivate that right now? There's a lot of opportunities to network online. Um, just last week, I joined um, an online networking for LinkedIn OC. And LinkedIn OC, their whole purpose is to bring the community together from online to real life in person, um, which is unfortunate that they, they had all these great programmings and things scheduled and then we moved it online. But imagine, it's uncomfortable. I logged in, I wasn't ready. I didn't think the camera would be on, um, definitely wasn't ready. But as I entered the community, I saw their cameras were on and I, you know, at that point you're either in or out, right? Um, so I decided I'm gonna just participate and it was so valuable. I got to know new people. I, I have new LinkedIn connections where I'm able to help someone, but then also someone is able to help me, right? If there's an opportunity for one of my students, I'm always open to that sort of connection. Um, so I encourage it. I'm not saying it's, it's um, I don't want to downplay it in any way for anybody who's listening right now. Um, it looks like there's a, how do I keep positive during this time? Elsa, it's a great question. The, the best way I can say to stay positive at this time is to really make sure you build a support system around you. Um, and this goes back to self-care. This goes back to the self-reflection piece. Um, for me, I can share with you some of what I do. Like for me, it's really been gratitude. Um, I know I come from a place of, like tonight I acknowledge I'm speaking from a place of privilege. I have a job, I have a home, um, but truly when all this stuff started happening, I, can't, I, I instantly felt different overnight. I felt like one of the wealthiest people in the world because I had a roof over my head, because I do have, I can take care of my mom, I can take care of my family, you know, so I get that. But the basic gratitude of just knowing that even when you have nothing, you still have your breath. You still have, you know, counting the day. Like for me, it's some days I have many things I can be grateful for and some days it's a much shorter list. But I will still always come back to that gratitude because it helps me recognize and come out of that self viewpoint and say, how can I be of service, right? So if I have enough, let me try, like how do I serve? Um, so that helps me stay positive and everybody tap into what works for you. I'm never, I never prescribe a one, <clears throat> one size fits all. Again, it's some folks like to meditate. Um, like my mindfulness practice is coming back to my breath, the gratitude, um, the knowing that a job doesn't define who I am, right? You are so much more than a job. You are so much more than a career. Um, so those are the things that I would say, take up. Take up a practice that serves you, that fills your cup. Um, I have a friend who, who runs. She's like, forget your meditations. I can't sit there and, and think about my thoughts. I need to run, run through my thoughts. So again, finding that mindful activity for yourself to be able to um, just stay positive. And I don't know, I'm gonna add one more thing Elsa and then I'll get back to my notes. But you know, when people say right now, and I tell this to my friends, I tell this to my colleagues, I tell this to my students and clients, 
it's okay to be not okay right now, right? Um, if you say I'm struggling, it doesn't mean you're not being positive, right? If you are having a hard time, it's difficult to ask for help, but now is the time to conjure up whatever you have inside of you and be brave and ask for help. Um, there are more helpers out there than there are not, um, and you don't have to go through any of this alone, but recognize that positivity isn't like, hey, everything is great, and I'm not gonna acknowledge this is hard. Yeah, you know, it's not that. Um, positivity is just having the grit and resilience to name what is happening and be able to move forward, to be sit with the discomfort and move forward as best as you can. Um, one of my favorite authors is Brene Brown, and she does her research on shame and vulnerability. And if you haven't had a chance to watch her TED Talk on the power of vulnerability, I highly recommend it. Um, it's like she's one of the thought leaders that I follow. Um, the other one is Simon Sinek in terms of finding your why. And they have so much um, content on YouTube, but just their two TED Talks. If you're just sitting there watching, I highly recommend both of those um, opportunities to stay and find your north. So I hope that answers it, Elsa. Thank you for asking. So we've talked about, you know, yes, your materials, yes, you're doing the prep, you've got the networking. I also want, like, nurture your current relationships, friends, family, former colleagues, former supervisors. Why not drop a line? Right now is the best time for you to be able to check in and just say, how are you? You're not asking for anything in return. I think so many people get turned off by networking because they feel like, oh, I'm being schmarmy, somebody needs something. I don't want to come off like I'm using someone. And if you can change your approach to that, that it's not, you know, networking for the sake of an end game, that it's networking to build your broad network. You want your network to be broad and deep and across a lot of different sectors because you just never know. You know, I mean, for me, I've changed. I went back to school and started from scratch, went to IVC, then came to UCI, then went off to grad school. It was not a linear line for me, but it was very much like, we're not stuck in one career. Like when I tell you earlier, you are not your career. That's not who, like, that's not how you're defined. Um, so definitely think about ways in terms of broadening your network and just building relationships. The way I like to, look at networking too is is building those relationships so it gets to a place of sponsorship um, and i love the word of sponsorship because um, i get to sponsor all my amazing students right i get to know them and then i'm in a situation i'm at an event i'm talking with a colleague and i hear of an opportunity and because i know them well enough i'm able to say i have someone in mind i can be that advocate i can be that sponsor in the room that says i have the perfect candidate for you hold the phone i'll get them to you and I can't tell you how many times that has been fruitful. And that's why I'm telling you tap into your network because we, you know, if I'm not looking, I can always introduce someone to somebody else in my network. I can always sponsor someone, but if I don't know you very well, then I can't quite sponsor, right? So if you, if it helps in any way, think of networking towards your goal of sponsorship. You're just trying to get people to know you, your strengths, your desires, your goals. Um, so that they can help get you there, right? So it's just nice to have someone in your corner. Now, when you're thinking about, yes, I said networking. Yes, I talked about LinkedIn OC. Um, but LinkedIn as a tool, this doesn't just allow you to network. And, you know, it's not about just adding people either. It's really about making sure you're making the connections. It's a mutually beneficial learning environment. This is where you can add value. Um, like I said, we could do a whole workshop just on how to navigate LinkedIn and strengthen your profile and how do you engage. But there's three things I wanna share with you within LinkedIn. So if you're, if you're not on LinkedIn, get on LinkedIn, okay? There are quick tips if you need help. There are absolute quick tips on the Division of Career Pathways website to just get you Set, like set up with your profile, the summary and all of that, but everybody has to start somewhere. So don't put it off. If you've been putting it off, don't put it off anymore. Um, but there is a filter, right? So you can let recruiters know you are currently seeking opportunities. You want to make sure that that um, is turned on, 
right? That filter needs to be on in order for recruiters to be able to reach out to you, to start looking at your profile. You want to have your profile have that visibility. From there too is, I actually have like a wonderful, just a banner across the top for COVID resources. And that takes you to who's hiring, right? They have a whole, a whole list of companies that are hiring. Um, a lot of times when people talk about like niche jobs, job search websites, um, LinkedIn is one of them. I, I don't recommend using, um, you know, the ones that are open to anyone and everyone. Like UCI, we have Handshake for our students. That's where, you know, employers post their jobs. The other place I would encourage you to do where we go back to step one in your preparation is when you're researching companies, just flag those companies and bookmark those companies and look directly on their website for their job postings. Right now, there's a hidden job market, right? They don't have the time and resources to be able to post all these jobs everywhere. So you want to make sure that you're not just relying on these job search engines as your only tool, right? So your goal is, yes, you want to be able to get close to these opportunities. You find a job you like, you find the company you like. Before you apply, you need to reach out to somebody in that organization, whether it's through a mutual connection, through LinkedIn, through identifying on their website, and set up that informational interview. It won't just give you a lens into the culture of the organization, but it'll sort of help navigate you through the process to tailor your materials, to use the language they use, to be able to say, this is why I'm a good candidate for you, right? So think about that. They also have other articles. Um, like I said, everybody's doing a webinar right now. There are, there are many career coaches that are on, active on LinkedIn and they go live. They'll go over resumes and basics and things like that, all free through the platform of LinkedIn. Um, I'm a big fan of free. I don't feel like you should have to pay for, for the common knowledge, in my opinion. Um, and if you come across somebody who's a resume writer, who's gonna charge you a ton of money to write this resume for you, just know, please know. Remember my face right now, don't do it. Um, it's not worth the time and energy, nor will it have the essence and voice of who you are, what you're trying to convey out. Um, plus there's resources within UCI, your own anteater community that is able to help. So start there first. But if anybody is claiming that they're gonna take your money and give you this great resume, that's a red flag. And then you can call me if it goes bad. Okay, just kidding. So let's just say that you've gone through and you actually got the call. Some of you, um, I, I've noticed that there's folks right now that are in the process of interviewing and they've either had internships or full-time job offers rescinded. Um, so they're back on the job market. Now let's say you've done all those steps correctly, you've gotten the call back, you know, your interview prep, interviews are gonna look very different now, right? We spent a whole workshop on body language and handshakes and eye contact, and now you wanna make sure, okay, at home, how am I preparing to make sure that I am presenting as professionally as possible, that I am able to still communicate? I've checked my Wi-Fi. So there, there's really steps to make sure that you are ready for the interview when that opportunity comes. And you don't wait to get the interview to then practice. You should be practicing your interviews right now. That is part of the process of the preparation. That is part of the process of the know yourself, what are your skills? What are your strengths? Because then when you're doing the practice interviews ahead of time with the job descriptions that you saved because you listened to me earlier, you know, you want to be able to go back and either have a friend, a colleague, a career coach, someone be able to give you that feedback, ask you the questions, you know, tell me about a time that you failed. If that's the first time you've heard or answered that question, you're not prepared right? And I'm not saying that to spook anybody, but it is very important to make sure you're ready, you're practiced, and that you know what you bring to the table and you know how you fit into the piece of the puzzle for that specific job, for that specific company. Um, I had a client that was up for a final position. She was a final candidate. And even though we'd done all the prep, in, in the moment, forgot to make the connection as to her why and why she wanted to be there. And that was the feedback the recruiter had given me was she never made the connection as to why she wanted to work for us. She didn't do the research on projects we're doing. You could do such a quick 10 minute overview 
of an organization, what's their trend, what are they doing right now, so that you can make that connection. So thank you for the time, that's perfect. And because I'm almost done, because it's the interview prep. I love it, who got prepared? All right. <laughs> So, so I do have a question if you have the opportunity absolutely. to sit in on there. Absolutely. I have a master's and want to switch careers. Any switch, any suggestions on switching careers without going back to school? Absolutely. So as a career changer, I had to go back to school because life story is a whole nother topic, but I didn't have the opportunity to um, get my undergraduate degree at the age time that I would have, right? So I was working full time. And I, I didn't have that. So, but what I wanted to do when I sat with myself and realized the work and impact that I wanted to have in this world, what I needed was certain um, credentials and education. Your job right now, if you're thinking about changing careers, is to go back to that step of self-reflection so that you can identify what are my transferable skills. What skills do transfer to that industry that you're looking for? And how do you articulate it? And I'm happy to elaborate more on that. I don't know if that answers the question. So whoever asked that question, please chime in again. But it's really important to go back and do the, do the work in terms of transferable skills, connect with people that are in that industry, and get a real picture of what you need to do in order to break into that industry. And one luxury that we have right now is that, you know, folks that may have not been accessible to you, their schedules, you know, you, you can give someone 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes of your time, as long as you're making the ask um, that, you know, you want to be able to um, come informed, but that also that informational interview then builds your network in that industry, right? It takes time, but it's not impossible. And I hope that answers your question, but don't discount all the transferable skills from your experiences, from your degree, your own natural talents. One of my favorite assessments is the strength, strengths finder, right? This, I'm a strength-based leadership philosophy person. If you, I could nerd out with you all day, but it's, it's something that comes back to your strengths and that transfers to any career, any job. Um, mo most of my skill set I brought to the table is part of who I am. Now the counseling skills, that work that I had to go get my master's for, that was a little bit different, right? Um, is it tricky to get a PhD in hopes of a 10 year track position? Oh, that is a loaded question. That's loaded. It is, it's not risky, but I'll say it's tricky, right? Cause you know, academia, 10 year track positions, it's a very competitive market. And having had the privilege of working with PhD students at UCI, um, I will tell you that I worked with folks that were on an academic job search, and I also worked with folks that were on a non-academic job search. Um, and, then, and then both being um, flexible and adaptable. You won't hear me talk about plan A or plan B, but I will say um, parallel plans. Right, because the moment you go to plan B, somehow it's not as shiny and exciting as that first one. And no matter what you say to yourself, you'll still feel like mm, that wasn't good enough. So be sure to have parallel plans, right? So have your materials ready for all of those things. And you know, the way I wanna just sort of wrap it up so we can open it up to other questions, because I'm loving this, thanks Elsa for the time, is to really then think about how are you managing your job search? right? You've got all these tools, you've got the different things I'm going to have you um, go on, but you want to make sure that you're finding the fit, you're finding that sort of support you need to target those companies, you're utilizing and making sure your materials are clear, concise, and consistent. Um, don't, I want you to be who you are in person, is who you are on paper, is who you are online, right? Um, there's that fine line, everybody talks about vulnerability and authenticity, but you have to show up as your full self. But please make sure you're showing up as your professional self, right? You can still be you, um, just rein it in a little bit. And then don't forget your follow-ups and your thank you letters, um, whether it's an informational interview, whether it's a job application, whether it's a job interview. Do not forget the thank yous, the acknowledging of somebody giving you their time, the acknowledging of someone like in your cover letter, you better believe it should say thank you for your time and consideration because someone took the time to read your materials, 
right? So going back to that place of gratitude, make sure you're doing that as well. Um, and, and really focus that. If you are doing it with intention, if you are doing it with clarity, it will make your job search a lot easier in a time when it feels like a whirlwind outside, right? And just two other resources I want to plug and then we'll open um, are the UC Alumni Career Network. This is out of the Office of the President. It's open to all UC alumni, right? And they have a variety of career development, professional development webinars. The next one coming up is something about a gig economy, right, Elsa? Um, so, you know, for, those, for the entrepreneurs in the audience, for you, if you're thinking about a side hustle, this would be a great webinar for you to take the time um, to register and, and get involved in. Um, I'm notorious for registering and then I, you know, life happens and you don't get a chance or right now some of you may have been distracted. There might be a crying child. You had to run. Um, but as much as possible to be as present um, to minimize your distractions when you're on these calls. But if you, if you tell yourself, oh, I'll just watch the recording later. Like for me personally, and this is just, I can only speak to my experience. I, I never get back to watching them. It just sits in this inbox unread and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go back to it. So don't fall into that trap. Make sure that you um, check in on at webinars that you definitely are engaged in. And the final one is through our Susan Samueli Health Institute. Um, they have free workshops. There are mindfulness workshops because I can't stress your self-care enough. If you're not coming from a place that you feel okay, it's, the whole job search will feel frantic, it will feel disappointing, it will feel disjointed, and it'll make it that much harder for you to be able to thrive in this setting. So definitely, I know it gets thrown out a lot, it's so cliche, but please make sure you're doing the self-care. And then, how much time do we have? I have no clock, I don't. I could talk all night. <laughs> we have 10 minutes. Uh, we do have a couple of questions if you're able to field them. Uh, I see you, is, lifetime learner, Yolanda. There you go. <laughs> um, any uh, references on a website for Strength Finders? Yes. So Gallup is, you know, they have um, free versions of Strength Finder that aren't necessarily coming from Gallup. Um, I, I personally recommend going to the source and creator because they've done decades worth of research within their strengths. And the theory behind Strengths Finder is, you know, we, we all operate on a whole lot of strengths, right? But this really hones in on your top five strengths. And when you identify your top five strengths, you're able to then say, okay, this is how I show up in the world. And you focus on enhancing and strengthening those skills. And inevitably people want to look at that list and go straight to the bottom and be like, what was my weakest, right? Because that's what we all do. But it's, of all the career assessments that I work with, whether it's MBTI, which is the Myers-Briggs um, type personality test, there are strong interest tests, there's some career counseling assessments that I use that, you know, none of them are gonna be your be all end all. Especially with MBTI, people poke holes all the time. But to me, I find StrengthsFinder as such a wonderful place to come at it with your, with your strengths. How do you show up? When I read about my strengths, I'm almost embarrassed because it feels like I'm so exposed uh, because I am my five strengths and I show up that way in the world and it's, it's just good to have and it's a wonderful thing for you to talk about in interviews that doesn't sound like everything else, right? You don't want to be generic. You want to be you. Right. Uh, another question or um, also an information is that one of our chapter leaders will be presenting on strengths and identifying your strengths. So that'll be in a few weeks, so keep posted. And one of the places that you can keep posted for that is on the UCI Alumni website. It's, there's a section, Anteaters Go Virtual. We have a list of a number of webinars we're doing. All our Wellness Wednesday presentations will be posted there. Um, and you can also I find the information on the um, alumni career webinars that Netta was sharing. Again, all of this will be um, put together for you in a document with our thank you email. Even us, we take Netta's advice to make sure we thank you for attending. So look for that. This content will be on that thank you email. 
That's wonderful. And you know, if I could just, uh, do, is there another question? Can I talk about something no, else? Go right ahead, now. Okay, just, <laughs> and if you have a question, please do chime in. Um, but you know, that, that notion that, you know, when we talked about it earlier about really making meaning of this time and your experiences and what's happening, I think that when you, um, when we do come out the other side of all of this, that we can look back and, and acknowledge, you know, who did we lift up alongside us, right? Mm -hmm. um, re like, I always say there's two kinds of people in this world. They either bring you down or they lift you up. And if you have people in your life that are not lifting you up, this is a fantastic time to sort of control, alt, delete, and, you know, do a spring cleaning, even if that means some of the relationships we've been hanging on to, right? People should be pouring into you, especially right now. It's not the time to tear anybody down. It's really to focus on your community that's going to lift you up. Um, and the other one, I always, like my brother always makes fun of me when I say this, but I don't care what job you do, please do it well, right? Um, it's, it's been a pet peeve, like when I, way back when, when I was in the service industry, I was the best damn hostess you could ever come across, right? So it doesn't matter what job you're doing, make sure you're doing it to the best of your ability. And if you need help, ask for help. But don't phone it in because that's your character, that's your integrity. And those are the things that when we are trying to go through all of this and be patient with ourselves, people wanna connect with, with others who are willing to work hard as they are. Um, and so just you know, keep lifting each other. It's definitely a time of uncertainty, but you have the tools at your fingertips, a phone call, an email away to be able to um, navigate these uncertain times. Right. Many folks That's are also great advice. Yeah. Great advice, Minna. Any other questions or anything? Well, uh, there was a question that came up uh, to get a little bit more information on a tracking system. What is it that you mean by a tracking system and what does that look like? Absolutely. So it's an automated tracking system. This is so that when we post a job, um, and we get 400 applications, it's, it's filtering through, you know, the people that are the fit, right? So automatically they can set certain requirements of, you know, if it requires absolutely 10 years on the job, if you have less, it'll cut you out. If you have, a, you know, if you don't hit those key words, you're missing those opportunities to be seen by a human being. So it's almost like that first layer, the system is put into place as a first layer to weed out the applicants that don't qualify at all. That's why I'm saying it's your goal to get past those things and to get past that is through a human being, right? So if you have a contact, utilize the contact before you even submit your application materials so that you're able to really tailor like what you're trying to put together for, for them specifically. Um, I, don't want, I don't want it to scare anybody though in terms of like, oh no, now I'm cut off. I will add, that when you look at a job description, it'll have a job overview. It will tell you desired skills or required skills and then desired skills, right? And I know many folks will just go through and, and won't apply because they didn't meet every single line item of that job description. I always like to say that a job description is a company's wish list. Like that's the ideal person they could get. But guess what? If that person meets every single one of those items, then it's most likely either a lateral move for them or they're just, you know, us career changers, we're looking to make that lateral move. It's not, it doesn't matter where we wanna come in. But it allows you to look at it, look at your connection of those things, um, connecting your skills and experiences to that job description. But I find that many people won't submit their application. Mm. And my rule of thumb is if you meet 60% of those line items, uh, I'm encouraging you to apply. Actually, I'm That's telling you, great to apply. Not, forget encouraging. Because, <laughs> and, and women especially mm. will not, unless they meet, you know, it, it's a default of ours, I, I'm not good enough somehow, but it's really important to utilize the 60-40. Like I said earlier, if, it's, if there is a system that's a requirement to the job like for example i i don't know c plus plus i don't know java i don't know those things right but i worked with all kinds of engineers who would explain these things to me so it to me i can't apply for that job that's clearly a key function of that job right 
But if I'm applying to a different role where I do meet it and I have the skill set that the job requires, but I might not meet, you know, those last four bullets, but I also have maybe something in the desired bucket that already offsets it. Right. So some of us with this advanced degrees, you know, maybe the requirement is only a bachelor's for a job, but you have that advanced degree. How are you leveraging that to offset some of the things that you don't meet in that job description? So, yeah. Great advice. Great advice. And I can hardly believe it, but we are at end of time. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, so I want to thank you tremendously uh, for your generosity and your time and your information. I know that you are a wealth of knowledge and you can do an hour on every single one of these topics. So we hope to see you again, sharing some of this information. Uh, we will send out a survey to all our participants please answer that and make any suggestions that you're interested in hearing, uh, maybe from Netta or some other speaker. Um, keep tuned to our Wellness Wednesday website so that you know what's forthcoming. We've got some exciting Can I One more thing about Wellness sure. Wednesday. Can I interrupt you? Just sure. Wellness Wednesday, if, if this was your first opportunity to join us tonight, please go back and watch the other two. The first one was an overall wellness strategy with two triple alums. They were fantastic. Last week we had um, yoga. She was amazing. Um, so, and I'm hoping this was of value for the folks that joined us tonight. And if there's any other way that I can be of any service, Elsa, please let me know. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and what we're going to have around the corner for our Wellness Wednesday is next week. It will be the 101 on meditation. So why is meditation helpful? What does it do to your body? And actually going through a meditation series, which will be very exciting. We'll also have the uh, medicine of laughter. So how does laughing help? So that'll be great. And then we also have the, um, another career counselor uh, for mental health within certain communities, how culture and COVID um, play into each other differently for different cultures. So keep in tune. We have quite a bit coming. Again, thank you for your time. We appreciate everyone's time here as participants. You make this happen for us. Uh, and I applaud. Thanks, Netta. everybody. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> wonderful. Have a wonderful night, everybody. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And be well. Thank you again for joining us tonight. Elsa, thank you so much. This was awesome. It was awesome. We got some great questions. A lot of thank yous for you, Netta, how encouraging you are. Um, and we just, you know, just how great you are. So I really appreciate that. Um, yep. Yeah, you guys are all great. Thanks so much. You're oh, so you're generous. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Oh, Melanie. Yay, Melanie. I know Melanie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so generous with your comments. Thank you so much. Here's the question. Is there a way to contact Netta? Yes. Yes. So I am on the AntNet network. Um, you are more than welcome to find me there. And I, I'm also happy to, sh is it okay to give out my email address? Also? Sure, you can go ahead and give your email address. Do you want to type it in? You want me to type it oh, in? I can type it in. I can type okay. it in. So <laughs> you can reach me at, Net hi, Caesar. You can reach me at my email. I do, I do ask for your patience and grace, though, if you do um, email me. It is an unusually busy time, obviously, with transitioning all the class curriculum and um, student community online. So if it takes me a minute, please, please don't feel like I'm ignoring you. You can also add me on LinkedIn. I have a profile. I tend to be more like a stealth-like LinkedIn user. My DMs is where I'm most active. Um, so please feel free to send an invitation. I'm, I will gladly accept you. And then we can start a conversation on LinkedIn as well. So either AntNet or LinkedIn, please find me. Um, I'm happy to help Charlize. Awesome. Well, you are all amazing participants. Uh, thank you. Have a great night, everybody. Be well.